Welcome back to the show today. I'm titling this show, Make Them Feel Important. Make Them Feel Important. And the theme of the show is about influence. So let me begin by sharing some names with you that if you're old enough, you're going to remember some of the names. And I'm going to maybe ask you how you feel about those people and what those people meant to you. Let me share the first one. The first one's name is Robin Williams. You remember the late Robin Williams? I can remember watching him. Um, on a show called Mork from Ork. It was a very, very silly show about this alien guy that be, he would be saying Nanu Nanu if you're old enough. <clears throat> I think I just aged myself just then. But it was a really funny show about this character and he was with this lady and her dad was like, you know, anyway, long story short. But you remember, if you're old enough, a guy named Robin Williams and how his story and his shows caused us to laugh and how at the end of his life, it got very, very sad. So that, I would assume that, again, that Robin Williams may have impacted your life. How about something as simple as post-it notes? You say, John, what, you go from Robin Williams to post-it notes. We're talking about influence here today. Imagine if you and I didn't have post-it notes. I'm not going to get into details of how that was invented. It doesn't matter at the moment. But you and I, if you're the office type of person, use post-it notes all the time. So they, post-it notes influence your life quite a bit. How about Levi jeans? Um, I can remember as a kid, we couldn't afford Levi jeans. I, I believe we wore Wrangler jeans back then. And it would have been really cool back then if I could have Levi jeans. And these days, at my age, that's pretty much all I wear is Levi jeans. It's a rare day when I wear another brand of of jeans because I'm really stuck on, on the feel and the look of Levi jeans. How about Apple? I'm not talking the fruit, I'm talking about the company, Apple. Can you imagine if Steve Jobs had not followed up on his dream or his goals? You know, this little phone I have my timer on for the show wouldn't be sitting here on this podium. And the iPad that many people use, and the iPhone, and all the other i stuff that's out there. And the evolution of Apple is developing consistently as a result of the influence of Steve Jobs and other many, many other people in his company. So and then we look at Microsoft, which is similar, kind of, sort of, to Apple and Bill Gates. And I mean, Bill Gates was a, a nerdy kid back then, if, you, if, I, if, if I could use that term, nerd. But he decided that he was really good at certain things. And he decided to, over the course of decades, to develop that talent and bring alongside him people that would uh, leverage his skills and his talents. I, I can remember years ago, in the late 80s, when we bought our first computer. It was a Packard Bell computer. And it was when the internet was very, very new. And back then, we had. Uh, it was called America Online. It's still out there today. And we would have to plug in our phone line, if you're old enough to remember this one. Plug in your phone line. And here, I'm not going to do the sound, but it was a very unique sound that it would make when you would connect with the internet. And then when, if somebody called you when you were on the internet, it would kick you off of the web so that you couldn't do what you were trying to do. It would be so annoying when somebody would call and you're right in the middle of a post or right in the middle of doing something and it would kick you offline. So the internet, obviously, is a, is a huge part of influence on mankind these days as a result of the idea of just a very few people. And then Star Wars, if you're into movies at all, Star Wars impacted the United States and the world as a result of George Lucas's idea and certain other authors' books that seeded those ideas. Again, we're talking about influencing the lives of people. There's an old, old quote that says, your influence on others is your net worth. You need to treat it as such. Again, your influence on others is your net worth. Treat it as such. Beatrix Potter, who wrote the tale of Peter Rabbit, wrote, I hold that a strongly marked personality can influence descendants for generations. Again, I hold that a strongly marked personality can influence descendants for generations. How many times can you think back to the people in your life that have been 
overt that have influenced your life, and then also people that have been covert. That is, people have been outgoing who've influenced you, and people that have been relatively quiet who have influenced you. I had a, a social studies teacher in 1979 by the name of Stephen Alsop, A-L-S-O-P. And Stephen Alsop was a, was a great teacher, I thought, and he taught us world history. And I believe, and I will believe that till I stop breathing, is that part of the reason why we ended up going international to adopt children is a result of what I learned in Mr. Alsop's world history class. Because I was exposed to things like India and China and other places I can't recall now. But the point is that I, he, he opened my mind to uh, places in the world that I didn't think about from day to day because I was from a little community in Lansdowne, Maryland that I grew up in and went to school in. So that was my little world. But he opened up my mind and my world in ways that I could not have imagined in dramatic ways. Roy Bennett said a few things I want to share. He said, one of the best ways to influence people is to make them feel important. Again, one of the best ways to influence people is to make them feel important. And then he followed up with that by saying, do more listening than talking, because talk more about them than about you. I want to invest a moment or two or three in those two concepts. When you and I make people feel important, you know what's going to be weird about it? And it happens across the board. When you make people feel important, they are drawn to you. They are attracted to you, whereby the opposite is true. When you talk about yourself more than listening to other people talk about themselves, they actually push you away. How many times haven't you been in conversations where somebody really takes up the entire conversation? They'll talk nonstop for moments, two, three, four, five, ten minutes at a time. And it's supposed to be a dialogue, right? A conversation. But they talk and talk and talk and talk. And then by the time they're halfway through their monologue versus a dialogue, guess what? Your eyes are rolling back in your head and you're, you're semi-conscious and you're not even interested in the conversation anymore. Why? Because they're more interested about them and what they have to say than what you have to say. Hear me. When you get other people, when you ask other people to talk about themselves and their story, they are drawn to you, which is frankly oxymoronish, isn't it? It's oxymoronish to think that people would be attracted to you when you listen to them. But that's exactly how you can influence people in a dramatic way. Think about, again, if you're old enough, to remember a show on CNN uh, called Larry King Live. And Larry, Larry King Live has been one of my models, if you will, in doing certain things in my life. Larry King would ask a question and he would sit back and wait for an answer. He wouldn't interrupt. He would let the person finish their thought. Whereas there have been other people, and I'll try to refrain from mentioning their names, is they will interrupt people consistently in the middle of a conversation because they think what they have to say is more important than what the other person has to say, and then the other person never gets a chance to complete an entire thought. Those kind of people, believe it or not, are rejected from society because they feel that what they have to say is more important than what other people have to say. Allen Ginsberg wrote a long time ago, he said, whoever controls the media, the images controls the culture. Think about that a minute in your life. Let me give you another story, a quick story. Most of my career on the financial planning side and the insurance side of my life would be working in the, inner, in, in, in the urban areas of places like York, Pennsylvania and Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, Maryland and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and other areas. And the news would get you to think that all those people in all those areas are murderers and drug dealers and evil and unethical and immoral people. That's what the media would show you. That's, the, that's what the media will try to get you to believe. However, if you work and live in those communities, you're going to find out that that is the opposite of what truth is. The majority, 98, 99% of the people in those communities are just like you and just like me. 
They're caring people. They want to do right. They want to do the right thing. They're hardworking. They're honest. They're ethical people. But the people that, that on the news are trying to project that everybody, in quotes, in these communities are bad people. What I'm suggesting to you is that what you allow to be put in your face, i.e. the news media, some of them, will definitely give you an impact, will give you an image of what's going on in your world, which may not be reality. Let me share it a different way. When you decide and when I decide to live in a bubble of whatever bubble that is, whether it's a belief system, whether it's a certain piece of your education, whether it's a, a routine of daily habits that you have from day to day, and you choose not to get outside of that bubble, then you really can't see what else is around you. What was really interesting to me is when we traveled overseas multiple times to, to adopt our kids, I was really exposed to the lifestyles of other people that were very, very happy living on, in American standards, meager means. That is, living in a tiny, tiny apartment, they call them flats over there, tiny flats, and, and earning $30, $32 a month in income. But they were happy. Let me give you another example. When I was a kid, uh, they would, the news would, would, uh, per, would share that, that the people in that part of the world were mean and uncaring and cold and, and not very humane. Well, when we traveled over there, that was, again, considerably the opposite of what it was on the news press. These people were, were great. They fed you until you were going to burst. They hugged you a lot. They laughed a lot. They were just like you and me, but the press would make them think that they're evil and or they're cold and uncaring. Think about the man by the name of Martin Luther King Jr. Many, many decades ago, he lived in, uh, in the United States that believed that, that dark-skinned people were a certain way. They were less intelligent. They were subhuman. They weren't worthy of the American dream. And so he got up and said in a multitude of different ways, but he said in one speech, I have a dream. He had a dream that a black child and a white child would be able to play together and live in America free of, of what was going on in that culture at that time. Well, he was killed as a result of that dream, if, if, if you will. But his dream, his speeches, his life really cascaded into some things that are happening these days that may not have happened if he wasn't so vocal with his dream. I'm asking you today to maybe think that you have the ability to influence people's lives in ways that you may not even understand. Michael Basie Johnson shared one time, he said, real men don't dance to other people's tunes. Instead, they play for others to dance. Again, real men don't dance to other people's tunes. Instead, they play for others to dance. If you ever want to look at other people's lives, get on some of these groups that are specific to certain individuals and certain groups. As an example, single dads or single moms or uh, parents with uh, sick children. And you're going to see a side of humanity that you won't generally see in the public. You won't see in, in your day-to-day -day walk at work. Or even maybe take somebody to lunch at work that maybe you wouldn't normally talk to. Maybe because they look different. Maybe they smell different. Maybe they didn't come from your side of the tracks, if you will. But you're going to find that if you choose to invest time with them, you're going to find that you and that person are much more alike than you would normally think by seeing them from across the office. When I was back in fifth grade, I was in a, a school, uh, and the... Uh, teacher, he had probably, I don't know, 20 kids in the room. And there was this one student, I, I will try not to say the student's name because I don't want to um, embarrass his family. But that student smelled so bad. I mean, he would walk into the classroom. You could smell him before he walked into the classroom. It was, I mean, this is not just once in a while. This is every single day. I was 10 years old back then. And he would just walk, and every day he would get teased, and he would get harassed. 
It wasn't until years and years later, because I was in the homes of thousands of households over my career, and a percentage of them smelled like this guy, that I didn't put two and two together, that he lived in a house of a hoarder. Again, he lived in the house of a hoarder. He was a, a kid. He didn't have any choice. He, it wasn't his choice to live in that environment and smell that way every single day. Maybe, sort of, maybe, kind of, you and I are walking through life thinking that we're not impacting other people's lives in a way that, because we're ignorant to it. We're so exposed to our lifestyle. We're so exposed and or used to our journey that we don't think that we're influencing the lives of people around us. I suggest to you that you're wrong about that. Think about an example, another silly example is McDonald's. I mean, we see them everywhere, but it wasn't always that way. Ray Kroc, as, as, mo as some of you know, at least they, he, was, he had this idea. And that idea mushroomed and evolved and grew into a, a multi, multi, multi-billion dollar operation as a result of an idea. I, I'm not going to get into if it's healthy or not. That's not the purpose of the show. But the point is that he was able to leverage that idea to grow into something that was tremendously unbelievable. There's a, an author that, w that lived decades ago by the name of Dale Carnegie. And in one of his great books, and that book is How to Win Friends and Influence pe pe People, he writes, the two highest parts of influence are achieved is one, people follow you because of what you've done for them. Again, to influence somebody, number one. People follow you because of what you've done for them. And two, people follow you because of who you are. Let me share it again, slow down a bit. People follow you because of what you've done for them, and people follow you because of who you are. In other words, he writes, the highest ranges of influence are reached when generosity, listen, and trustworthiness surround your behavior. Generosity and trustworthiness surround your behavior. And let me add a caveat to that concept. Without expecting anything in return without expecting anything in return. Because some of us, you, I'm sad to say I've been there a couple times, that when I've done stuff for somebody, secretly wishing that I would get something back out of it, that's not a good thing to have. That's not a good attitude to have. Because really, if you want to influence somebody, you have to understand that you should be doing it without having an expectation of anything in return. Now, the other party should maybe reciprocate to share some things back. And that, that's a very interesting concept that a lot of people have not mastered yet, is that when you give, you do get. Most of the time, and many of the times, it's not in the way that you give. It doesn't always happen this way, believe me, because I've been through some stuff too. But most of the time, many of the times, that when you give, it opens your heart, it opens up your mind, it opens up your psyche in ways that you can see things and experience things that you haven't experienced before if you would not have been a giver instead of a hoarder or a receiver, somebody who didn't open up and share with many other people. Condoleezza Rice said one time, power is nothing unless you can turn it into influence. Again, power is nothing unless you can turn it into influence. There are people in your life and there are people certainly that have lived in my lifetime and I've had the unfortunate experience of, of being around that their lives were all wrapped around them. But the people that I remember more favorably than others are the people who consistently they give, they give, they give, they invest in the lives of other people. Again, not to get anything back out of it, but just because Gandhi comes to, to mind, the, the great person God and Gandhi who lived in India decades ago. It wasn't about him. It was about the people in his community. It was people in his country that he decided to take a stand in certain ways to do things that he probably would not have done if he didn't care about other people. So the older I get, the more careful I am who I allow to influence me. Again, the older I get, maybe the older you get, you need to be careful about the people that you influence in your life. Let me just share it in a slightly different way. 
in my past, I would allow certain people in my life because I didn't want to offend those people. Those certain people would be people that were negative, people that were dishonest, people that lied, people that cheated. I thought at the time that I had to keep them in my life because maybe I worked with them or they lived in the neighborhood or maybe they were relatives of mine and I had to, in quotes, I had to endure the behavior because they were part of my life. It wasn't until I got older that I realized that, you know what, I need to rethink that philosophy because I really don't have to keep these people in my life because their actions, their words, their deeds, their attitudes, their behavior is directly and indirectly influencing me in a negative way. So since you and I understand that life is very short and some of us very, very short, that we need to be much more proactive in who we allow in our lives in order to impact us and then as a result, impact the lives of other people around us. Because you might think that because this unethical person or this negative person or this complainer or this person that, that cuts corners and does things that are not very uh, kosher, not very honest, is going to not impact you, I guarantee you that they're going to impact you. If for no other reason, they're going to dis distract you from things that you need to be doing consistently. I'm asking you to think about the people that you're allowing to influence you in your life. Germany Kent wrote one time in a silly kind of way, tweet others the way you want to be tweeted, almost said treated, again, tweet others the way you want to be tweeted. We know of one president of the United States who tweets an awful lot, and some of the things that this president of the United States tweets about is not very polite, very, not very nice. So again, this quote is, tweet others the way you want to be tweeted. Another person with the last name of Ibrahim said, influence is when you're not the one talking, listen, and yet your words fill the room. Let me slow it down and say it again. Influence is when you're not the one talking, and yet your words fill the room. They say, when you are absent, and yet your presence is felt everywhere. Think about that in your own life. Again, I want my influence. I want your influence to be remembered even if you're not in the room. There are stories that some people tell that are thousands of years old because the words and the actions and the influence of those individuals are still making waves, are still making a difference, are still influencing the lives of people thousands and thousands of years later. You have to be intentional about the influence that you allow into your circle. Would you allow yourself or people that you love walk through a grove of poison ivy and not expect to get poison ivy? No, I would hope not. But you and I do that all the time. We walk into, we walk through, we hang around people by choice, not because we have to, because we have to, but by choice, we hang around people that are doing things that are wrong. They're doing, I wish I would have known this when I was a kid, when I was, when I envied, listen, when I envied the, the famous people in school, the important people, the kids that were just in front of the spotlight all the time, who were famous in, in quotes in school, that, that were attractive, that were the center of attention. I just envy those people because I was, I was shy and I stuttered a lot and I was nobody and I had the short hair when back then they had the long hippie hair back when I was in school. I was the oddball among a few others in the school. But I wanted to be like all those other guys. When 30 years later, some of those guys, I'm not going to name names, but some of those guys are not having such a great life. But yet back then, they were, they were the, the cream of the crop. They were the best of the best. They were the most popular kids in the school. Influence is really important. Who you choose to hang around makes a difference. Quick story before I wrap up the show. Thousands of years later, there was this guy named Nehemiah. And Nehemiah was tasked to do a big project. And Nehemiah decided that, you know, he couldn't do this project by himself. He was smart. He had influence with the people in charge. 
but he realized that he couldn't do it himself. So what he decided to do was he chose to recruit, use that word intentionally, recruit people that were really smart in other areas that he wasn't so smart in, that he wasn't gifted in, that he wasn't talented in. And he rallied around himself quite a few people that were really skilled in certain areas that leveraged his skill sets, that he was able to influence their lives in a specific way. They were able to influence his life in a very specific way, a very meaningful way, which then uh, made an impact in the lives of thousands and thousands of people as a result of both sets, both sides of the coin. The, 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 uh, the person who led the, the, the endeavor and then the team that he rallied around, that nobody felt that they were better than anybody else. Everybody understood that they were in it to win it. They were in it for the bigger picture. They were in it for people that were people that they may not even meet face to face. So they got their heads together. They, they put their minds together. They put their work together. And they created and finished a project that was pretty big in a record time. I'm asking you in this episode to think about the people that you allow into your life that you influence every single day and be very proactive about it. Because if you're proactive about it, both in the receiving end and the give, giving end, you're gonna find that you're gonna live a life that is much more impactful in ways that you cannot imagine today. My name is John Carver, thanks for watching, and we'll be back real soon.